What's going on everybody? Welcome to the fifth tutorial of uh, Python for Finance using Quantopian and Zipline. We're just going to pick up where we left off in the last one and that is uh, the inclusion of fundamental data and actually this this program we're going to write here is going to trade based purely on fundamentals. So let's go ahead and go. So we started writing our query. We're pulling uh, information for the price to book ratio and the price to earnings ratio. Basically so far for like every company in existence. We need to filter that way down because we have 255 maximum companies. So filter, what we can do here is we can filter by you know various things. So first we could start by filtering by fundamentals. Uh, and in fact, let's just copy and paste this because this is going to give us a hard time. So copy that, paste. So we're going to say, like I was saying before, uh, generally the PE ratio that everyone's looking for is 12. Above 12 means it's maybe overvalued, below 12 undervalued. But again, growth has a major impact on this. So, um, and there's another one that's a PEG ratio, so price to earnings to growth. So that's another good one to use, but we're just trying to show an example here. But anyway, so as a general rule of thumb, 12 is what we're looking for with a PE ratio. So we're gonna say we want all companies uh, that have a PE ratio less than 14. So we're gonna wide our net, widen our net a bit. Next, um, we're going to, and in fact, actually, we'll we'll leave that. And I don't think you can write like multiple filters here. So I think you have to actually uh, do this, copy, come down. We'll add another filter here. And this time we're going to filter based on the price to book ratio. And price to book is basically how much, basically the assets of a company is the book value. So the price to book like for a technology company, let's say, might be really bad. Like the price may be way higher than the book value of the company, but say the company is a manufacturing company, chances are their book value is gonna be pretty close to their price just because that's their company's value. But then companies can have things like patents and stuff like that that can play in. So a lot of technology companies will have patents and so on. But the book value is basically like, if we took this company and we sold all the assets of this company and all the, almost tangible things uh, that we have, how much money would we have? And then, so that's the book value. And then the price is the market cap basically of that company. So we do market cap divided by the book value and that's your price to book ratio. So one is pretty good. Anything over one means there's the price is way more than the book value. Anything under one signals to us that this company is like way undervalued, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should invest into every company that has a price to book ratio less than one, uh, because generally a price to book ratio of less than one uh, can actually signal that something major is wrong with this company, uh, if that's how cheap the company has become. So uh, keep these things in mind. Again, this is I'm not really trying to uh, create some sort of epic strategy here or suggest that this is how you should invest. These are just examples. So PB underscore ratio. And this time we're gonna look for anything with a price to book ratio of less than two. Again, just like PE ratio, depending on the sector of the company and you know the business structure of the company, the, the PB ratio might vary wildly. Luckily though, if you want to uh, get crazy, the Morningstar also has company sectors. So you can treat companies different depending on their sector. So really cool stuff. You could get pretty fancy with just fundamentals here. Um, I would say actually with the inclusion of these Morningstar fundamentals and this querying capability, you can do probably more than you can with the quant stuff right now. So it's, it's pretty cool. So anyways, you've got filter, you can filter based on you know this data. So now we've filtered down significantly, but then we might still get more than 255 companies. There are a lot of companies out there. So we can first, if you wanna, if you're gonna limit, you better order by, otherwise you're gonna get like a random sampling. So if you want a random sampling, fine, don't order by. But if you want something specific, you should order. Uh, and because we don't, I don't really care for like penny stocks if I don't have to, what we're gonna order by is market cap. So we're gonna say fundamentals dot, um, valuation and then dot market underscore cap and then we're going to say dot dec desc and that's descending so this will order this return for this sq alchemy query it will order it from the highest priced market cap downward so then we're going to order by that and then we're going to limit 
by 10. So what this is going to do is return to us the 10 most valuable companies that have a PE ratio less than 14 and a fundamentals uh, price to book ratio of less than two. Okay. So that's our before trading start. And then now with this return, we want to do update universe. So update underscore universe, universe. And again, the universe is your universe of investable companies. Okay, so these are the companies that Quantopian is going to be tracking the price of just constantly and tracking all the information on constantly. And uh, so that's probably why they limit us. I'm not sure who chose 255. It might be like a memory thing, like 255 times all the data equals less than two gigs of RAM. I don't know. No idea. Uh, anyway, update universe. And uh, and then what we want to update our universe with is the basically the return of this query. So this query, actually this is the query, is returned to context.fundamentals. So the way that we can do that is we can just do context.fundamentals. And then columns. And I wish it didn't do this to me dot columns dot values. I wonder if there's like a way to turn off the, the autocomplete or type hinting and stuff. But I really, I like this autocomplete. That was great. But the little suggestions, I wish I could turn them off. And I bet you can somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, um, moving along. So now we've updated our universe. And then now we're going to go down to handle data. So this one, hopefully we can write pretty quick, but again, handle data runs once per bar of data. So if we're using daily data, that's gonna run once a day. If we're using minute data, it's running once every single minute. Now, since we're using fundamental data, uh, I don't really know. I, I wonder if Morningstar is updated. I believe it's updated once a day, but they might update live, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it would probably be once a day. But anyway, continuing on, uh, we're going to reference how much cash that we have. And in this is, as usual, context.portfolio.cash. Easy enough. Then we want to reference our current underscore positions. Uh, and that is going to be equal to context.portfolio.positions. Awesome. And let me make some space to pull this up a little bit. Cool. OK. So now what we want to do is uh, we want to reference the stocks in data. So again, context is tracking us. It's tracking all the information on our portfolio and how our strategy is performing. Data is all of the stuff that uh, we might be interested in. So data is basically referencing our universe. Okay. So coming down here, we're going to say for stock in data. So for each of the stocks in our current universe, uh, what we want to first check is the current underscore position. So are we currently invested in that stock? Possibly context dot portfolio dot positions. Uh, and then we want to know the positions for that stock and then dot amount. So the amount of positions for that stock. It might be zero, but it might be more than more than zero. Then we also want to reference stock underscore price. And this is just the price of that stock right now. So data stock dot price. Okay. Then we want to say our plausible underscore investment is equal to cash divided by 10.0. Make sure you divide by 10.0. You might have a decimal of cash, but you might not. This is Python 2 code, so don't forget that decimal point. Otherwise, it's going to round to the nearest hole. Moving right along, that's your plausible investment. And then you've got share underscore amount. This will be the integer value, because we can't buy partial shares. This will be the integer value of our plausible underscore investment divided by the stock underscore price. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have a try and then we're going to have an accept. Try accept exception as E. And then here we'll just print the string version of E, whatever that might actually be if we do. And that'll print it out into the console. And then we're going to ask if stock price is less than the plausible underscore investment. So if we can at least buy one share, um, then what we want to do is uh, we're going to say uh, if the current position 
of that company is equal to zero. And then also we want to know, we could use ands, but ands, like we could make this all like one big long statement, but that's kind of confusing. But if you want to, feel free to build it into one giant statement. <laughs> We're going to say if context.fundamentals, fundamentals of the stock that were, uh, is in question and the PE ratio, PE underscore ratio is less than 11. So now we're actually looking for a company that is less than uh, 11, so 10 or under, or actually it could be 10.9999. Anyway, less than 11, what do we wanna do? We wanna order, so we're gonna place an order for that stock, and then the amount of that stock will be share amount. And that's it. Uh, and let's go ahead and just, just run that, actually. So we will, let's... Um, we can build it, but let's just run daily. Uh, let's just run for like a year. So, oh, 06, 17, 2014. And then let's run that full back test. So this is just buying the companies. So we'll let that run. But of course, at this point, we're not actually selling off any of the companies um, that we've invested in, you know? So we make our buys and stuff, but, and then with earnings, maybe we can make uh, more buys, but really we made most of our buys right here, some more buys, here was a couple more buys, some more buys, and so on. Now our return was 3.2, our beta, 0.66, not that bad. Our sharp ratio was absolutely horrendous. Uh, <laughs> so not the best strategy yet, but the next thing that we actually want to do is sell companies that change. Because right now we're just buying companies, but the P.E. ratio and the price to book ratio can both change. So we need to handle for that. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial is handling for changing values. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.